Fill my cup, Lord. I lift it up, Lord. Come and quench the thirsting of my soul. Bread of heaven, feed me till I want no more. Fill me up, fill me up, and make me whole. Oh, Father, we come to you today, and we thank you for your life. We thank you that you are the bread of life. Oh, in the name of Jesus, come and inhabit us today. Come and invade our territory today. In the name of Jesus, we present ourselves vessels unto you this day to be used of you. Speak to us, Holy Spirit. Teach us. Be our comfort. Be our guide. In the name of Jesus. I thank you, Lord, for this message. I thank you, Holy Spirit, for teaching us about the bread of life. In Jesus' precious name, amen. He has opened up the, the, the portal of heaven to us today. Can you say amen? And he's pouring out a blessing that we will not be able to contain, that it will overflow into our families. It will overflow into our coworkers. It will overflow into those uh, that we see on the street. Oh, in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. For the Lord would say unto you, Surely my presence is in this place. Surely my presence is with you. Surely I am the one that will feed you the bread of life. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you for being with me today. It's a glorious day. Uh, in, in the kingdom of God. And we thank the Lord for his mercy and his grace being with us. And he's watching over us and he's protecting us. And that the blood of Jesus is over us today in the name of Jesus. I want to lay some foundation. Because we know that it says in, in John 6 verse 35. Jesus said to them, I am the bread of of life. He who comes to me shall never hunger, and he who believes in me shall never thirst. Oh, praise God. So he is the one who nourishes us. He is the one that helps us to grow. He is the one that fulfills every need that we have. Fill my cup, Lord. I lift it up to you, Lord. And bread of heaven, feed me till I want no more. Fill me up. Fill me up and make me whole. Oh, don't you want to be whole today? Your whole spirit, soul, body, mind. That you're whole in your, in your relationship. That you're whole in... in your finances, your whole. Jesus wants us whole in the name of Jesus. And then in Psalms 34, 8, it says, Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Did you know that he's good to you? Every good and perfect thing comes down from heaven. I'm in the book of James. Comes down from the Lord. Every good thing that happens to you. Hallelujah. Blessed is the man who trusts in the Lord. Do you trust him today? Is your faith in him and not in the doctors and not in your bank statement and not in where you work and not in your ministry? Uh, is your trust in the Lord? That's a big question. Psalms 19.10 more to be desired than gold. The word of God, the bread of life, is more valuable than gold. Yea, much more fine than gold. Sweeter also than honey and the honeycomb. Oh, praise the name of Jesus. He grows sweeter and sweeter 
as the days go by. Oh, what a love between my Lord and I. I keep falling in love again, over and over and over and over again. We're going to eat of the bread of life today, and we are going to value what we get from the Lord. The Word of God is the only thing that's going to stand. Heaven and earth will pass away, but my Word will stand forever. And when we put it inside of us, when we eat it, oh, hallelujah, that's what this message is all about. Eat the bread of life. And when we eat it, it will nourish us. It will mature us. It will make us joyful. Hallelujah. 2 Timothy 2.15 Be diligent to present yourself approved to God. In other translations, it says study to show yourself approved. A workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. We need to eat the word. We need to eat the bread of life and therefore we will be workers in the kingdom of God and we will be able to discern good from evil. Can you say amen? You know, now I want to talk about his body for just a few moments because Jesus is the bread of life. And at the Last Supper, he was gathered there with his disciples and he picked up the bread. And let's read in Matthew 26, verses 26 through 30, the very familiar passage. But let's, let's believe the Lord to speak to us in this, in this passage. And as they were eating, Jesus took bread. He broke it and he blessed it. And he gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body. Now, every time you take communion, every time I take communion, it's not about us. It's all about Jesus. It's all about his body and his blood. And what we're doing, we are acknowledging the finished work of the cross. We're acknowledging what Jesus did with his body on the cross. And the cup represents his blood. And what he did with his blood. And so you see, it's not about you. It's all about Jesus. We're acknowledging. We're saying yes. And we are being partakers of his body and his blood. Not only are we partakers, but we are beneficiaries. We are reaping the benefits of the finished work of the cross. That's why Brother Fred and I take communion every single day. Because we want to participate. We want to acknowledge what Jesus did on the cross. And we want to reap those benefits. Oh, hallelujah. Take ye, this is my body. Then he took the cup and he gave thanks and gave it to them saying, Drink it all, for this is my blood of the new covenant. Which is shed for many for the remission of sins. But I say unto you, let's stop right there. Let's talk about the body. In 1 Corinthians eleven twenty four, 24, it's, it's another uh, example where he says, take ye, this is my body, which is broken for you. See, his body was broken and bruised and wounded that our body might be whole. Do this in what? In remembrance of me. He was wounded for our transgressions. I'm in Isaiah 53, verse 5. He was bruised for our iniquities. Now, we're talking about eating the bread of life today. And the more you eat the bread of life, the more you digest the word, hallelujah, then it becomes life to you. You enter into his life, Zoe. 
You enter into that life, that realm. Can you say amen? He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him. And by his stripes, we are healed. Oh, hallelujah. We were healed. We are healed. By those stripes. Let's talk about his body. What happened in his body? One thing that happened is they pierced his side. And Ephesians 2.18 says that through him, through Jesus Christ, through his body, through the bread of life, we both have access by the Spirit to the Father. So he made a way for us to go before the Father. He made access for us to go into the supernatural realm, to live there, to move there, to have our being there. Oh, praise the name of Jesus. He is the bread of life. And as we eat of him, as we digest the word of God, hallelujah, then we become like him. We become like him. You know, I think about the story of the of the widow. Uh, Elijah was by the brook, and the brook dried up, and God sent him to Seraphath. And he said, there's a widow there that will sustain you. And he went, and the widow was gathering sticks. She and her son were gathering sticks. And Elijah the prophet said, now listen to what I'm going to speak to you. He said, make me, he said, do you have, make me a little cake. And she says, I only have a little bit of meal and a little bit of oil. And Elijah says, make me one first. When we eat the bread of life, then all that we need flows out of that. Everything that we need our meal will not uh, run, our oil will not run dry, our meal will not be depleted. We will have everything that we need. And this, this is a, an example in the Old Testament of, of the body of Christ and the bread. The bread, Jesus is the bread of life. And he says, if you give unto me first, then you will benefit from that. And that's what she did. And it says that if we read in First uh, Kings uh, chapter 17, that her meal did not deplete. It not run, and she didn't run out of meal, and she didn't run out of oil, and she had everything that she needed. Hallelujah. Praise the name of Jesus. So, I want you to think about his body. The stripes upon his back were for your healing and my healing. Hallelujah. The crown of thorns upon his head were well, for any type of mental disorder, any type of anxiety or depression or emotional trauma. It was... That's what those crown, that crown of thorns was all about. Hallelujah. Jesus Christ, the bread of life, will bring you out of any type of agony, mental, any type of mental disease, any type of mental disorder. He will bring you out. Because he's already rearing the crown. Hallelujah. And then we have the nails in his hands and the nails in his feet. There were three. There was one nail, two nails, three nails. Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. That's what some theologians say that those nails represent. But I believe that because he had nails in his hands and nails in his feet that our hands are free and that our feet are free. 
Hallelujah. Because the cross liberates us. Hallelujah. And there's three areas that I want to talk about today. As we eat the bread of life, we're going to be liberated, we're going to be separated, and we're going to be translated. Now, 5 o'clock this morning, this is what the Holy Spirit said to me. I want to set my people free. I want them to be free. Hallelujah. In John 8, 32, it says, And you shall know the truth. The truth is the bread of life. And the truth shall make you free. And the more you read the word, the more you digest the word, the more liberated you come. Hallelujah. Praise the name of Jesus. And in Romans 6, 7, he has freed us from sin. He has freed us from sin. For he who has died has been freed from sin. Hallelujah. When you come to Jesus, then your old man is dead and gone. Hallelujah. And the new man comes forth. I'll get to that verse in just a moment. Let's read Romans 6, 18. And having been set free from sin, you became slaves of righteousness. Or the, the, another translation says servants of righteousness. You serve the Lord rather than and the light rather than serving the darkness or the devil. We've been set free. Set free, liberated. Liberated, separated, and translated. Hallelujah. If you will eat the, the bread of life, that's what is going to happen to you. And your life will never be the same. Hallelujah. Romans 8, 12. Therefore, brethren, we are debtors, not to the flesh, to live according to the flesh. We are no longer obligated to do fleshly things. We are no longer obligated to do the things of the world. Hallelujah. To think the way the world thinks. To do what the world would do. No. Once you begin to eat the Word of God and you digest the Word of God and you are walking in the Word of God, hallelujah, then you are no long, longer obligated to the world. Whew, I like that. I don't want to be obligated to the world. My desires, I want to be the Lord's desires. That I, I want to do what he does. Hallelujah. I want to think like he thinks. I want to speak like he speaks. Hallelujah. Psalms 54, 6 says, I will freely sacrifice to you. I will praise your name, O Lord, for it is good. This is what King David says. I'm going to freely sacrifice myself unto you. Lord, we freely give ourselves unto you today. Just say it with me. I freely give myself to the Lord today. A sacrifice. Woo, hallelujah. Hallelujah. And then, knowing that he has set us free, we know the truth. We've been eating the word of God. We've been eating the bread of life. We've entered into the supernatural realm. In Galatians 5.1, it says, Stand fast, therefore, in the liberty by which Christ has made us free. And do not be entangled again with the yoke of bondage. The enemy wants to put you in bondage where the bread of life puts you in freedom. Let's stay free. Let's live there in freedom. We are liberated today. Hallelujah. And then the second component of this message is that we have been separated out for the Lord's purpose. We have been separated out. In Romans 8.35 it says that we are we are not separated from the Lord. 
when we are eating the bread of life, we're becoming one with him. And it says, who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation, or distress, or persecution, or famine, or nakedness, or peril, or sword, nothing shall separate us from the Lord, from his love. We are one with him. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. There's, there's another verse that I'm, that's coming up in me right now, and it says, Come out from among them, and be ye separate. Come out from among them. Come out from the world and what they want to do. Come out from the darkness. Come out from among them, and be ye separated. And touch not the unclean thing. Oh, hallelujah. See, he separates us out. When we begin to eat the bread of life, then we are separated out. And then in Acts chapter 13, verse 2, there were prophets and teachers that had gathered in one place, and then prophecy began to come forth. And as they ministered to the Lord and fasted, the Holy Spirit said, Now separate me, Barnabas and Saul, which was later called Paul, for the work to which I have called them. So you see, the more you eat the bread of life, the more you know your purpose. The more you eat the word of God, the bread of life, the more you want to fulfill destiny. Oh, hallelujah. The more we want to do the Father's business as we eat that bread. Praise the name of Jesus. You see, as the widow lady in 1 Kings 17 gave the first little cake to the prophet, then she and her son began to eat, and they had lack for nothing. They had abundance. Do you see what eating the bread of life will do for you? One of those benefits is that you will overflow. You will have abundance above what you can even ask or think. Oh, hallelujah. So eat the word. Eat the bread of life. So we're liberated. We're separated out for the, for the work of the kingdom. And then we are translated, which means we are changed. We're being changed from glory to glory. From this realm to the next realm. Praise God. How many of you know that there's many, many realms in, in the Lord? It says in Luke uh, 9, 28 and 29, this is when Jesus was translated. He took Peter, James, and John up on top of the mountain to pray. And as he prayed, listen to this. His appearance changed, and his face was altered, and his robe became white and glistening. Why? Because he had entered into uh, that supernatural realm where he began to talk with Elijah and Moses. He began to communicate with those in the heavenly realm. That's what's going to happen when you eat the bread of life. It's going to change you. It's going to translate you into a new arena, a new realm. Hallelujah. Romans 12, 2. And be not conformed to this world, but be transformed or translated by the renewing of your mind. See, that's what you're doing when you're eating the word. That's what you're doing. You're coming out of the old mindset and you're putting in the new mindset. Renew your mind that you may prove what is good, acceptable, and the perfect will of God. Oh, hallelujah. And then Ephesians 3.10 says, To the intent that now the manifold wisdom of God might be made known by the church, 
to the principalities and powers in the heavenly places. Praise the name of Jesus. Colossians 3.10 It says, And have put on the new man, who is renewed in knowledge according to the image of him who created him. How many of you know that when you accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, you become a new creature, a new person. Hallelujah. Old things. This is in 2 Corinthians 5, 17 and 18. And all things are passed away. And behold, all things become new. And then the very next verse says, and all things are of God. Oh, hallelujah. The old self is gone and dead. Remember, you're dead to sin, but alive unto Christ Jesus. And so, as you eat the bread of life, you're going to be transformed, transfigured, translated, whichever word you want to use, you're going to be changed. And you're going to be changed into the image of, of his son. That is, you're predestined to be just like Jesus. That is your purpose and your destiny. And the more you eat the bread of life, the more you will be liberated, the more you will be separated, and the more you will be translated. Hallelujah. And Father, I want to pray for the people in Jesus' name. I want to pray for the people to understand your body. That they will be partakers of your body. That they will receive the benefits of your body in the name of Jesus. Lord, I pray for every individual that is watching this video. That they will begin to desire your word. That they will begin to eat uh, the the word of God, the scriptures, that they will begin to digest the scriptures and that they will begin to produce the image of Jesus Christ. Lord, let us come forth into all of the earth, moving like you move, speaking like you speak, walking like you walk, Loving like you love. Giving like you give. In the name of Jesus. I pray for those right now that have needs of healing in their bodies. Those that have had heart issues right now. I speak to hearts. Be healed. Be whole. Let God make your heart perfect in the name of Jesus. I speak to every artery. Oh, every vein in that heart area, to be clean, to be pure, to be opened, that the blood is flowing into the heart and out of the heart as it is supposed to, in Jesus' name. I speak to legs today to be healed. I speak to hips today to be healed. Those sciatic nerves that have been bothering you, I pray that the spinal uh, energy Flow out into the hip area in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. I pray for those right now that need jobs, that need income coming in. I speak it into your life right now in the name of Jesus that you have the job that you need, praise God, and that you're a diligent worker in that job, in Jesus' name. I speak that your bills are paid. I speak that your taxes are paid, in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God bless you today.